Dylan Perkins, please come to the office. Oh. Dylan Perkins. some point today, uh, just make sure I get it. Um, I will give you a little bit of time if you need to work on that. Remember, the whole goal is to like look at a picture, tell me what the angle is, like the number. So like on like number one, it said like find angle number six. Okay, so you gotta find what digit it was. Oh, it was 72 degrees. Then you have to tell me like on those like what the property was. Some of the problems ask you like what was the property? Oh, those were corresponding. Oh, it was vertical. Oh, it was supplementary. They added to be 180. That's how I knew it. You know, that type of thing. It was just a quick property. That way you're kind of just finding what your work was. It wasn't approved for anything like that. They were supposed to go pretty quick. The last few, 24 through 29, that's when you have to find multiple answers. Not just one specific one, like the angles on the picture. So they're very clear on which one you have to find. Like find X or find Y or find multiple. Okay, so that was the homework. I'll give you a little bit of time if you need that today to work on that. Our goal today is to do um, what we started yesterday, which is slope. Uh, I do want to um, I do want to review that real quick with you to make sure that we know how to find slope today. Um, in fact, I'll give you a couple problems where you have to find it yourself, and you have to work with your little group today to see if you can find it. We'll, I'll try to walk around and see what numbers you have. I'll try to give at least everybody a chance, like every group today, to have, actually have a chance of finding slope at some point, like what the number was for it, the fraction. That's what I want for slope, and to see if we can get these right. Does that make sense? What we're going to do today? Just kind of easy practice. My goal is to go through these four. These four types of slope today. Okay, that's our goal. Um, so um, we're going to probably get about five, five, six different examples today. That's kind of what we're looking at. That way every group has kind of their own chance of doing this. Okay? If we, if we get time, because uh, I do want to give you a little bit of time to work on this today. I didn't give you much yesterday. Um, I do want to make sure that we go through the postulates. There's two postulates that I want to make sure that we can cover. I don't know if we'll get to that today. That's kind of a goal if we can get there. Um, if we don't, no worries, we'll cover it Monday. There's two. And they just deal with slope. That's all it is. Now remember, the whole goal, the reason why I brought this, this section up was because it goes really well with parallel lines. And that's actually what one of our postulates talks about, like the idea of like how parallel lines intersect, or non-intersecting lines, I should say, and, um, and why. So that was kind of, uh, that's the idea. Okay. All right, let's jump right in. Let's do an example of slope. That way everyone kind of sees what we talked about yesterday. Um, this is the Cartesian coordinate system. X, Y axis, we have the origin. Uh, we have different quadrants. I know we didn't talk about that topic yesterday. <clears throat> but how we find slope on this. Basically what we need is we need two coordinates. That's the idea. We need coordinates. Or what I called yesterday, order of pairs. Okay. That was kind of a key term that the book uses, ordered pairs. Now the reason why it's a pair, it is a pair of numbers. There's two numbers in here separated by a comma. What order do they go in? Say it again, I heard it. Alphabetical. Alphabetical. Great. 
So the x number would come first, the y number would come second. What those x and y numbers are, it's your axes. Okay, that's your major x-axis, major y-axis. You're giving me the number that it's attached to. Okay, I would like some of you to just give me two numbers, please. Two seven. Two seven. Oh, that's fine. All right. So two comma seven. Okay, we'll call this letter, um, let's call this letter A. That would be too great. So um, what that means, you have to find the two on the x-axis. Uh, on the x-axis, these are the numbers. They go positive going this way. They go negative going this way, and this is zero in the middle. Okay, so we're going to 2, 7. So 2 over, so you have to pick your elevator you're getting into, because remember, we always start on the origin. And so we go 2 over, and then 7 up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. There you go. So there's 2, uh, there's two 7, that's letter A. Okay, I need another coordinate, please. Negative 2, 4. Negative 2, 4. Call this letter B. So we'll find a slope for that one. So negative 2, comma, positive 4. That's what we're going to do. This is letter B. Now that is an individual line that is a unique line for this picture. Um, okay, so there's my line. And I want to find slope. Now some people like they use their fingers to figure it out. Not a big deal. You don't need your fingers to figure out slope. You just need the coordinates that I provided you here. So the formula to find slope. Uh, if you don't remember, yesterday we always used like the letter M for slope. You subtract the Y numbers and you put those over the X number. And what this stands for, it stands for rise over run. And it's giving you, basically this is going to give you a fraction. Single digit over single digit. It can be positive negative, I don't really care. And the idea is that we're looking for how the line is tilted. That's all the slope tells you, like where it's tilted. So if it's you know a positive fraction, it's going up like this. So I'm expecting that this number will be positive because it's going up to the right. If it was sloping down like this direction, it's probably a negative fraction of some sort. Uh, and then we're going to talk about the, the two rare cases today, like when it's a zero slope or an undefined slope. And that's when they are not tilting like up or down. So those are the rare cases. Okay, but. On my coordinates, what are my y numbers? 7, 4, right? These are my two numbers, right? 7 and 4. We have to subtract those two numbers. So, and I don't care the order you subtract. I usually, when I write down the coordinates, I go top minus bottom. That's just usually how I do it. So, 7 minus the 4, that's your, that's your y numbers for my coordinates. And then I'm going to subtract the, the x numbers, so 2 minus the negative 2. And I always subtract from whatever the numbers are. So, what happens to the two negatives? Positive, right? So, we're going to subtract. This is what we have. So 7 minus 4. On the top, we have the 2 plus 2 on the bottom. Because the, these two negative signs cancel each other out. So, we actually have this 3 over 4. That is what I'm looking for. It's positive. That's telling me for every 3 that I rise, I'm running 4 to the right. Every 3 that I rise, I'm running 4 to the right, and I'm running on the line every single time. That's the idea. It's rising and running. Makes sense for slope. Okay, that's it's a simple number, just a fraction. That's all I want. Okay, we're gonna do a couple of different examples today. I'll ask for different groups to give me what their number is, and and I want to see if you guys can figure this out. So that's kind of the goal today. Okay, now to do that, you need graph. You need graph paper. So I'm gonna have a volunteer from our group because we have five groups in here. I'm going to have somebody send up a volunteer to get a piece of graph paper. So, grab a volunteer. Be brave. Come on up. Hey, now, if, if it looks like your graph is like weird, like I cut it weird, you're probably looking at the wrong side of the paper. <laughs> there was two sides, and I cut one so you had the entire graph. You had the X and Y on it. Okay, does that make sense? So one was probably cut short, correct? 
I don't know. Maybe it was perfect. I don't know. Do you have two perfect graphs on the back of your paper? Yeah. I don't know. That's clever. I didn't even try it. Because oh, it's not lined up correctly. So it's cool. All right. Okay. Now, for each group in here, I'm going to give you coordinates. There's two coordinates. Um, and then you're going to have to graph this. Now, every group will get their own coordinates. So I want to see that you can graph them, draw a line. Okay? So. Um, and then I want you to find the slope. So now every group in here will have their own. So this group right here. Here's your coordinates. No. So you guys are going to have C and D for coordinates. Let's go with um, negative 1, 3, and 5, 8. That'll be yours. Okay. Uh, middle group. Ladies right here. Let's go with E and F. Your coordinates will be um, negative 7, 4, and 8, negative 5. Your guys's. Okay. Back group, the gentleman back there, uh, G and H, your coordinates are going to be um, 7, 6, and 7, negative 2. That's your guys' group. Back over there, let's go with I and J. <coughs> We're going to go with um, 8, 4, and negative 5, 4. That's your guys' group for that. So graph those two dots, draw the lines, you guys are all done. And I haven't given you your guys' correct? Okay. And yours will be, let's put it over here. Your guys' group will be, J, L, and K, and in order, let's go with negative 10, comma 10, and 4, 0. All right, so again, each group in here has their own coordinates to draw. They're going to draw the line, and then your goal in your group is to find your slope for your line. You can count with your fingers, or you can use the formula. I'm going to leave my example on the board so you can use it as well. So everyone in here has a unique line, showing a unique spot, so the numbers should all be different. So just pick your brain. Oh, good. Figure out. 
You guys have the CD, correct?
and that's the y numbers, and then the negative 7 minus the 8. Okay? And so you're actually right, you're going you're to get 9 on the top, so that's 4 plus 5. And on the bottom, you have that, uh, that negative 15, which you're actually right. You guys can apply it, which is 3 over 5. And the negative 7 doesn't matter if it goes top or bottom, or if it just goes in the middle. Uh, I think some people are like, they're naturally confused by that. You can put the negative sign wherever you want. It makes no difference. It's still a negative fraction. So I think some people like thrown off by that now. That was good. Very nice to know. Okay, all right. Next group, gentlemen in the back. Make some little answering so we'll put you on the side. This is one of those unique cases, thank you. That's <laughs> definitely in the type line up front. Alright, so let's talk about this one. You notice it's not tilting to the right, like like up to the right, and it's not tilting down to the left. It's going straight up and down. So, what did you gentlemen figure out for a slope? 8 comma 0. 8 comma 0, or 8 over, over zero, 0, I should say. Yeah, 8 over 0. Yeah, that's a unique number. Okay, um, because of the way that the numbers actually subtract, that slope is not positive and it's not negative either. Um, it doesn't matter if there's a positive or negative sign on it. It's the, the fact that you got a zero on the bottom that makes it unique. Okay, uh, so because I'll go top minus bottom, right? Six minus the negative two and the seven minus seven on the bottom, those are the axes. So we get eight over the zero, like you said. I don't consider this number to be zero or negative because can you divide anything by zero? No. This slope, what you're looking at, since this is a vertical line, right? It's going straight up and down. This slope is undefined. An undefined slope. Okay, it's, um, some textbooks refer it as no slope. Okay. There's no slope. There's no tilt to this thing. Um, what happens here is that you're not tilting to the right or left. So there's like literally no business model here. Okay, I can't even compare it to like um, a certain idea here that you know you're not like gaining money, you're not losing money over time. You just you just went up and down in one particular month, and there was no like there was no rhyme or reason to it. Okay, so do you see the difference here? Zeros on the bottom. That's what makes it undefined. You cannot you cannot divide by zero. Okay, thank you, gentlemen, for volunteering. All right, uh, ladies in the back. Very good. Now, another unique picture. Very nice to done. All right. What do you ladies figure out for slope? 13 zero. 13 zero or? Zero. Yeah, 13. Oh, zero. Zero 13. Zero 13. Yeah. zero 13. That's a unique slope number. Zero over 13. This picture is not going up to the right. It's not going down to the left. Okay. You have, there's not profits, there's not losses here. You, you basically flattened out, this is a constant, right? What happened here when you actually subtract those numbers, we're using the i and j over there. Four minus the four, those are the y numbers. The bottom numbers are the x numbers subtracted. So the top minus bottom, so eight minus negative five. And you're actually right, you get zero over 13, right? This slope is considered to be zero slope. Zero slope. Okay, what that means for zero slope, you neither have profits nor losses. You zero it out. You flatten. You're not making money, you're not losing money. This is what a non-profit organization would do. They want to have flat money. They don't want to make money, they don't want to lose money. They want to stay usually above zero, so they're not going bankrupt. 
Um, but they just flat. They spend everything they can. Farmers do this. That's like a farming, you know, farmers, they want to make profit, don't get me wrong. But when it comes to the end of the year and they're filing taxes, they literally, most farmers around here will claim that they make zero dollars. They'll spend every penny they make to buy new trucks, new equipment, to pay for new grain, pay for gas, pay for fixing. Um, they'll make zero, and they, they literally register zero on their income tax. Because they're, um, it's a, it's a tax incentive for farmers that they can claim zero dollars made up to a million dollars. They can claim that they make zero dollars throughout the whole entire year, the whole year. Okay? Um, so if you're going into being a farmer, you, um, one of the big things that you need to learn is like your tax code. Um, they actually, they have a like, class. And this is the, the type of idea. No, don't get me wrong, farmers make a lot of money, but they don't have to claim any. So well, their, 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 their actual graph of their profit usually is zero. They, they don't want to be a negative, they don't want to be, negative, be bankrupt. They have to have at least some money, but they're making zero dollars for the entire year. That's usually what they claim. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, ladies, thank you very much. All right, last group. Good. All right. So now this is not one of those unique pictures. It's not flat map for zero. It's not going up and down for the undefined slope. What type of slope did you ladies have? There you go. You're losing money over the long run. Okay, from last year to this year, they're definitely going down. They're losing money in the long run if you look. All right. Thank you very much. Now, what was the number you guys found? I don't know. Okay. Uh, because they have to. They have to actually uh, subtract these. So y numbers are on the top, so they get 10 minus zero where 10 comes from, and the negative 10 minus 14. So I'm just, I just go top minus bottom, that's usually what I always do. And so they're actually right, they get 10 over negative 14, and they simplify it to be 5 over negative 7. So they just pull it down. It's a negative slope, it doesn't matter where you put the negative slope. Top or bottom. Okay, all right, so, so does everyone get a, kind of a feel for how slope is working? Okay, where the numbers come from? Um, the big idea what we're going to be going into next week um, is trying to put this together, right? <coughs> trying to come up with equations for lines. That's going to be one of our topics for next week. You know, there's different types of equations for linear equations. We'll talk about lines. And then what we're going to go into is kind of problem solving. You know, um, figuring out, you know, where, where certain lines cross, other things. So there's going to be kind of a mix of a little algebra one, a little geometry. And the reason why I like to bring this up is because at some point, we do need to get numbers for like pictures, like put a picture on the grid system so we can get some actual data for something. So we can actually see what the angles are in the corners, all that good stuff. Okay, so that's that's what we're gonna be looking at. Okay, questions, comments, concerns on anything we've done here today. Does anything confuse you? Didn't understand something? I want to thank you for all my volunteers that came up here. Group. That's awesome. Okay, all right. Um, so today. We're going to probably keep the class notes for Monday. I don't want us to waste too much of your time. I want to give you about the last 12, 13 minutes here. If you need to finish up page 183 or work together, get finished up, let's do that. Let's do it at some point today. Now, just to warn you, I know that I'm gone after 8 period today. I leave it like middle of night for basketball. So if you're going to turn it in later, uh, preferably try to do it before then, or you're going to have to slip it underneath my door. Make sense? Yeah. Yeah, it's a it's not too far away, but we play it before. It's not too legal. All right, here we go.
Hey, if you didn't hear that, there's a biology test today, so make sure you're prepared. Study for biology. I already failed it. So. I already took it. I took it for a period. I think we're oh, seriously? Oh, seriously? I'm going to fail it. No, we're yeah. like, especially if you don't study. I have an right. extra period. What? <laughs> What's on? My uh, we can't that. No. What, what, you don't what is it about? What is it about? Cell cycle. Oh, cell cycle. Cell cycle, yeah. Plants, animals, whatever. Is it hard for us? I don't know. Um, you know, he doesn't really. I have no idea. It's about, like, I'm pretty sure about these guys. I understand that it's not sharing the box. Just the top. That's what I want. I understand. Don't worry. I understand. He's never got a fair chance. No, keep it off. <laughs> no, did he take it off the floor? He did. She was putting it on my board. Alright, now I see you. I'm going to put some tissue on it. You guys don't. It's probably already in. He's super fast. Yeah, I know. I should have, like, drew it bigger. I guess that's what you do. I'll draw it bigger for you later. Okay? Oh, I still have time. I still have time. I can draw it bigger. Yeah, you're right. 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 You're right
Girls, have a good day.